if I have maybe. Awesome. So let me do first, I want to start this because, you know, there's so many things in terms of journey, right? Um, you know, for those of us who get into multifamily investment, it's usually there's something that that gets you uh, that spark that gets you started in investing. Um, you guys, of course, are interesting because you, it's the story is, ha, is twofold. There's the 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 the, the military aspect of it, and of course the multifamily aspect. So, what I want to both ask you, I guess, um, you know, before we get into talking about multifamily aspect, you know, take us back to, you know, how, what was your spark to get into the military career? Uh, Brian, we'll go with you first. Um, you know, how did you start? Uh, you know, as a get a, a marine. So, so funny, funny story. You know, senior year in high school, one of my friends. Uh, uh, got accepted to the Naval Academy, you know, and uh, um, when when finally came out and like, hey, I'm so excited, I got accepted to the Naval Academy. I remember looking at him, and he 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 was he he was an athlete, but and and he was also one of the smartest guys in the entire school. Not kidding you, you know. I remember saying to him, I'm like, why are you wasting such a you know such a good brain on the military? All right, so that that's that's what my attitude was. That, that's what 17 year old Brian Briscoe thought, but. Uh, um, as, as a 19 year old, I went and served a mission for my church. I spent two years in Chile and that really made me rethink a lot of things, you know, just seeing the, the difference. And incidentally, Chile is not a third world country. They're one of the richest countries in Latin America, but just seeing the difference made me rethink a lot of things and um, ended up gaining a, a much greater appreciation for what we have here in America. And that, uh, um, basically prompted me to, to look towards, um, reserves, you know? And so I checked out all the services and I, I settled on the Marine Corps and, uh, you know, as a 24 year old enlisted in the Marine Corps reserves, which is, you know, five or six years later in, in life than most people do. But, uh, um, very much coincidentally, you know, I, I get out of boot camp in August, 2001, and, you know, a month later, the, the World Trade Center went down, um, already had a degree. And so the next thing for me was, you know, commission an officer candidate school and, and go active duty. But, uh, um, you know, part of part of that is uh, one thing that's interesting. And I, I look back at and just, just the way things happened. Um, I never really intended. I never really planned on doing 20 years active duty. It just kind of happened, if that makes sense, you know, Um but yeah, that's, that's my, my story getting into the Marine Corps. You know, it was, um, you know, a newfound appreciation for, for what we have in this country, you know, trying to, to do my part to serve. And then World Trade Center went down. It's like, okay, you know, reserves isn't enough anymore. So um, decided to go active duty. Excellent. Yeah, obviously that, that, that is uh, an event that struck many people personally and mm -hmm. something that will catapult you to action. Um, and then, so Hutch, how about you and your, your story into how you uh, ended up into the Marines? Man, so as they would say, there's two days that are important in the Marines' life, right? The day you join the Marine Corps, the day you step on those yellow footprints as an enlisted man or woman, and the day you realize why or how you got there, right? So it was not until recently, uh, year, about a year and a half ago, um, you know, I, I had to do some soul searching. How did I get to where I am, mm -hmm. right? And it brought me all the way back. So it could be when I came to America in 1998, I was born and raised in Jamaica, came to America in 19, August 8th of 98. And my dad told me about the Marine Corps and then I, then I went to meet the recruiter. Ah, maybe that was it, but can we go further back, right? Um, and as I dive deeper into my life and see how I got to see how I got to where I was, I remember this event and it was crystal clear to me, all right? So this event, I was in third grade reading what is called the Children's Own, which is a mandatory reading for school-aged children in Jamaica. I remember reading a article of a gentleman. It was in the U.S. military. He was stationed aboard a ship and he was working on an aircraft. I remember having the thought that at that point, if I ever go to America, that's what I want to do. I want to join the military and I want to, walk, I want to work on aircrafts. Right. So needless to say, when my dad introduced me to the, to the recruiter, I told the recruiter that if I didn't have something in aviation, I'm not leaving my house because that was a dream of mine. Right. So because um, I, I, I know that I needed a skill to fall forward on after my 20 plus years or 20 or 20 plus years in the Marine Corps. You know, so that's how I joined all the way back to third grade. 
Um, now, so so obviously, because you know you're young, we're look back 20 years and and you know you're we're all young at that point uh, uh we probably had hair right um so i'll, I'll start with you on this hutch i don't uh, know what you're talking about i still have hair <laughs> come on <laughs> not, not a lot but it's there uh so you know at, at that age you know you make decisions and 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 no one ever, you know, every just the time, the concept of time, right? Uh, you know, five years, like ten years out, whatever. I mean, uh, when 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 you did, did you think like this is going to be my career? I'm going to do this for twenty years. Like like, you know, uh, how how are you at that process at that time? Yeah. So, um, join join the Marine Corps. Like I said. Fresh out of Jamaica, um, August 8th of 98, and by September 27th, so September 28th, I was standing on the yellow footprint. So I never really got got used to any kind of greatness that America can, can afford, right? Um, so the military was my life and has been my life for the past now 23 years, right? You know, so when I joined, um, it's the inoculation in boot camp, which was inoculation into what it means to be American. You know, they start to realize like, look, you know, as the drill instructor, they teach you about their customs and courtesy. And then when they dive into the traditions that make the, makes the Marines great, right? You realize that you are now a part of something that is better than yourself. You know, so whether you get out of the Marine Corps and join another organization, yes, we have that option. But I love what I was doing. I was still having fun. I got the opportunity to travel the world. I, got, I, I was developing the opportunity day by day to, to, to mold, mentor, and inspire great Americans. And that was, that was very rewarding for me. So every day has been amazing. You know, um, every time I, um, I re-enlist, you know what I mean, is I always say that's the best mistake that I've ever made. You know, so I just never had a plan to get out before 20 years. And, you know, I would get out, one, when the the government tell me your service is no longer needed or Brian and I buy enough apartments to where I have to choose <laughs> <laughs> or you get too busy with apartment investing yeah 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 so um, how, about you, how about you Brian because uh, so I'll, I'll yeah. confess, I, I had a lot of time driving down from New Jersey to South Carolina so I listened to some podcasts and I heard you, you had an interesting story about wanting to be a professor at one point I, I was um, in my first semester of a PhD program at the University of Minnesota when the World Trade Center went down, you know, so um, well on my way to be a math professor. And like I said, I, I, I never planned to do 20 years. Um, and it took me a long time to sign on, on the bottom line for OCS because I, I was waiting for the ah. university to give me a letter basically saying that you know, three, three and a half years from now, when your tour is over, you can get back into the school, you know, and, and that was, that was the last puzzle piece that I needed to be able to sign on the dotted line and go active duty. So, you know, my, my plan up front was, all right, I'm going to do this active duty thing for the three and a half years that they're, you know, that, that was the minimum that I could get in at the time. Um, I'm going to do the active duty for three and a half years. You know, I'll, I'll do whatever I have to do during that period. Um, and then I'll come back to school, get my PhD and resume life as, as I had planned. But, uh, you know, what ended up happening, you know, I ended up getting stationed in, in Okinawa, Japan, and I started, I, I had a couple of realizations, you know, one, one of the first realizations is, you know, as a captain in the Marine Corps and right before my, my first opportunity to get out, I just got promoted to captain as a captain in the Marine Corps, I was making more money than, um, I would make as a, you know, brand new PhD out of, out of school, you know, and that, that was one thing that I started thinking of. It was, you know, economically not feasible to go back to school, you know? So I'm like, okay, I can go back to school. It's going to take me a year to, um, to recover what I've lost a year to get back to where I was. Um, and then another three to four years to get a PhD, you know, so five years from now, you know, I'll, I'll go through all of that, you know, schooling and, and pain to earn exactly what I'm making right now, you know, and it just didn't make sense. And um, at the time, I wasn't sold on a career in the Marine Corps. And at the time, I, I basically said, you know, looked at what was available. And I said, OK, there, there's really one job in the Marine Corps that I really want. And I said, if I get that job, I'll stay in. And lo and behold, I got the exact job that I wanted. You know, it was working at a, at a university, San Diego State, um, and I was in the NROTC, the Naval ROTC program, 
you know, so basically I was working as a college professor, which is what I wanted while still being a Marine. And it was, um, anyway, that's, that's kind of what, what put the nail in the coffin, you know, after, you know, spending three years at a university, I started scratching my head thinking, you know, being a college professor, eh, you know, I was able to compare the two careers, you know, side by side. And, um, you know, I, 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 I was definitely leaning towards staying in the military and then the economy crashed. And after that, it was just like, okay, I'll take one more set of orders. And so I, I basically pieced together a 20 year career by, you know, one job in the Marine Corps and I'll stay in. Oh, I get it. You know, and then economy crashes and like, okay, I guess I'll do one more tour. And uh, then at the end of that tour, they, they dangled just the right carrot in front of me. They offered to send me to, um, you know, graduate school to get another master's degree um, send me the defense language Institute, learn Portuguese. And then that'd be followed by, you know, a year in Brazil, you know, learning the language and culture. And then I'd be redesignated as a foreign area officer, which is, uh, um, something that I, that I couldn't turn down. So that's, that's really how I ended up becoming a career Marine by, you know, um, really not just, just taking things one tour at a time and then getting, getting in far enough that, you know, my wife and I just said, okay, you know, we hit this point where we're going all the way to 20. That's awesome. And, and, and thank you for your service. By the way, thank both of you for your service. Um, I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, so yeah, I guess, you know, you talked a little bit about what you do, you know, professionally. Um, let me, let me hear from Hutch now. Uh, I know, you know, you talked about, you know, working on, on uh, you know, products and, and what, what do you give a little bit of, inside of what your day-to-day -day is and what day-to-day -day job in the military has been. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so grew, I grew up in the Marine Corps, um, turning wrenches, you know, so I promoted myself out of turning wrenches. Don't do that anymore, right? So um, my initial job was an airframe and hydraulics technician. I worked on the CH-53 helicopters, which we started on the 53 Deltas. And I was fortunate to get stationed in Hawaii. Now, the funny story is that during high school, <clears throat> I wanted my honeymoon to be in Hawaii. So it's just crazy that I got stationed in Hawaii my first tour around, right? Um, so I um, actually got married to a, a Hawaiian, a uh, Hawaiian <laughs> lady. And uh, our honeymoon was actually in Jamaica. So it was like <laughs> two different, you know, it was like you, you're having a vision of the future, but you can't really piece it piece it together as, as, as it's actually going to happen, right? You know, so, you know, so that, that, that's what, that was amazing. But love the aviation community uh, because it's always something we can fall forward on. It's a, it's a job that if we're not paying attention and if we're not communicating effectively, you know, it could mean people's life, right? You know, so I really do like that aspect of it, being able to, so I'm direct maintenance and controlling qualifications of the different people and just being able to watch them grow. Right. As a young sergeant, I was in charge of, you know, 12 other Marines and my responsibility to make sure one, you know, we break them off, um, not break them, but get them to sustain the transformation. Right. It's a nice way of saying, you know, make them more committed to being a Marine. Right. So sustain the transformation um, of, the, of, the, of the Marines, you know, so get them qualified on their platforms and just watch them grow, grow through the rank, ranks from a Lance Corporal, Corporal, Sergeant, um, qualifies as a collateral duty inspector, um, CDQAR or into the QAR position, quality assurance representative. You know, so it's an amazing transformation to watch and every single day you leave work feeling um, a sense of accomplishment because you get to measure the progress, whether it be the, the status of the aircraft or the qualifications that you have, um, that you have created, created within your work centers. And that's, that has been very inspirational for me throughout the past um, you know, 20 plus years. But now as a maintenance um, control chief, my job is to, is to run the entire maintenance department along with my maintenance officer, you know, just to ensure that we have the right personnel and that they are qualified and are, are, my in, oh, yeah, sure. are in the right billets. You know, so um, where I am right now is mostly administrative billets to ensure that our, our, our command and maintenance department can function appropriately um, to meet our commander's intent. Great. Sorry if you guys can't can hear me. Uh, so I, I'll stay with you, Hutch, and and transform into I guess the next question, which is, 
what brought you into multifamily and how, how did you get started into multifamily investing? Yeah, so what brought me in and how I got started is two different people, one of which is sitting right here. <laughs> yes, so um, I was doing some flip down, in Pen flip down in Pensacola and my realtor brought a, a, um, a 55 units to me and say, Hutch, I have this um, seller who's interested in selling this property. I said, okay, um, you know, we was doing flip to get to multifamily eventually, but I don't believe we were there yet. But when the when my realtor brought it to me, I was like, okay, bet, let's look at it. We started analyzing the property, seemed like a feasible deal, start talking to a few folks I was networking with. Networking with. They said, Hutch, if you can get this property on a contract, um, I'm willing to invest. You know, so that was a that was an eye opener for me. Like, look, um, there's people out there willing to put their money, willing to allow me to put their money to work for them, and that was an amazing eye opener for me. But even though we were working in single family space to get to multifamily eventually, because we understood that's where the true wealth is created, due to the, its ability to create passive income, right, and also the ability to scale a lot faster. You know, so analyze the property and with the eye opener of the other people's capital, you know, I became more interested, interesting. So what I realized is that my way of analyzing the property were not very efficient and I needed a more eff effective way and efficient way of um, analyzing property properties that brought me to the Michael Blanc program, which is um, is called the syndicated deal analyzer Then I find out he was having a, a um, conference. And Athena convinced me, well, she, you know, a lot of time we, we talk about, you know, the reason why a lot of us do things. And Athena has been my, she, she is the fuel in my fire, right? She always, you know, pushing me to do, to do bigger and better things. You know, she said, you should go. And um, we allocate some capital to go there. And I went to the conference and, you know, we was networking and I found out Brian was going there. We started networking a lot more. And this freaking guy, right? So we got there. I'm there in the lab, lobby. I know he saw me because I tell him I was wearing a New York hat. This dude walked past me like he didn't know me. <laughs> they were like, hey, sir. <laughs> Got him over there. We started chatting. But, you know, from the instant conversation, it was it, it was like, you know, instantaneous credibility. Marine Corps officer, Marine Corps senior enlisted. You know, like I was telling you earlier, Jerry, he looks like me. Right. The people that looks like me, veterans who are on the tail end of their retirement, you know, looking for the next best, big step, you know, so. We got to talking and uh, like I said, um, instant credibility and our relationship grew from there. You know, a few months later, we syndicated 55 units together and, uh, you know, we just got a ball rolling from there. You know, so um, why I started was my realtor brought me the 55 unit that exposed me to the possibility. And, you know, who helped me started was, you know, Brian Briscoe, you know, a man that looked like me. Excellent. That's perfect uh, segue for Brian. So. Uh, to give his story of uh, how he started in, into multifamily. Yeah, you know, I, I I did what a lot of people did, and I, I started with single families. You know, it was, um, you know, like like a lot of people. You know, I, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad once upon a time, and and he talks a lot about commercial real estate, and I didn't quite have the mindset. You know, I I, I couldn't think big enough to get into commercial real estate. You know, in, in two thousand four, two thousand five time frame when I you know, first read the book, but, uh, um, you know, I, I at least had the presence of mind to get into single family. And, um, you know, like I said, at the time I was not intending on doing a 20 year career, but I started thinking, you know, Hey, every time I move, you know, I might as well just buy a house and turn it into an investment property. You know, that, that was my strategy. And, you know, we ended up with, you know, three single family homes and, and that was it. But, uh, um, so, that got me into real estate. And I kind of thought that, you know, buying one or two single family homes, you know, I, I didn't put a lot of, you know, mental effort into it, but, uh, you know, I, I just figured, Hey, I'm going to start buying accumulating assets and eventually I'm going to be rich, you know? And, um, a lot of that in between stuff, I didn't really figure out, you know, I never, never worked out how many I needed or anything like that. I just, you know, when, when I had an opportunity and my opportunities were every time I moved, I I'd just buy another house. So, um, I ended up getting proof of concept from that. You know, we, we had a little bit, you know, a little trickle of cash coming in. We had a lot of equity into a couple of, you know, a couple of these houses. And um, I realized that I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the hunt. I enjoyed talking about real estate, you know, everything about it. 
Um, and I, I really enjoyed, you know, watching these values go up and up and up and up on these properties, you know. So um, basically the way I got into multifamily is, is I wanted to figure out a way to scale that, you know, and um, ended up reading a book on, on multifamily investing. And, you know, from there it was, it was over. It was like, all right, you know, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. And um, we ended up selling our, our single family homes and rolling the, the capital from those homes into, uh, um, you know, multifamily properties. Um, you know, I, I paid for a coaching program, you know, so, so when Hutch and I met, I was, you know, in the Michael Blanc coaching program um, and ended up finding a couple of partners. And, um, you know, for, from there, you know, thing, things snowballed, you know, we got, we got the 55 unit and on the heels of that, a 33 unit. And on the heels of that one, you know, another, I think 80 was the next one, but uh, um, we just, we just got a lot of traction pretty quickly. And, um, you know, real, real soon it was apparent, you know, and at the time I was working at the Pentagon, but it became apparent really soon that uh, um, I, I needed to get out of the military. You know, it was, it was like, I was approaching my 20 year mark anyway. I hadn't fully committed to getting out, but as soon as we started getting traction and where, I realized my time was much more valuable um, outside, you know, nights and weekends. I was making more money in, on nights and weekends um, than I was, you know, for my, for my W-2 job. And when, when I started realizing that, you know, it just became more and more clear that I needed to put my retirement papers in and, um, you know, come to the end of a 20 year career. So that's, that's how I got in, how it kind of snowballed and, you know, what led me to where I am today. And, you know, right now, you know, I, I can say I, I retired this long ago, you know, tugging on, you know, the end of my beard, but, uh, um, but yeah, so yeah, that's it. Awesome. I, I, I have two takeaways there because from both of you, uh, you both mentioned, you know, the Michael Blanc and, and, and so I have the question, uh, I'll start with Hutch, um, you know, in terms of you, going for mentorship or like education how valuable was that in in taking your real estate uh i guess you know career uh, to get it started yeah absolutely it's all about my mindset for me it's, it's mindset is, is huge for me right so athena and i was having a conversation not too long ago right and one of the things we talk about is what we we're talking about was um service members who are dual service members, right, their spouse. So the husband and wife, both in, in the military, you know, so they both get in a basic, basic an allowance for housing, which is a lot of money, right? Especially, take for example, a two corporals getting married and they're in California, um, their total BAH is somewhere upwards of $5,000, right? So that that's um, the basic allowance for substance, substance together, I mean, for housing together, you know? So I think that I was talking and I was telling her about um, some folks that I've talked to about the possibility of them utilizing or leveraging their VA, VA eligibility um, to start getting, to getting into the real estate um, investing or just to buy their, their home a duplex, triplex or fourplex, right? Which is allowed. And one of the things that Athena told me, she was like, look, they might be financially capable, right? But they're not mentally ready. You know, so it's just like going from single family to multifamily property, right? A phrase that I learned recently is that the ears will not hear and the eyes will not see what the mind is not looking for. So when you start looking for a better version of yourself or looking for a better way to, to create wealth, generational wealth for you, you and your family, right? Um, it makes you want to surround yourself with those relationships who's going to take you, take you places, right? Relationship. Right, things that's gonna take you more closer towards your goal, you know. So, like I said it, before, and I needed to to figure out a way to analyze property. But in the Michael Blanc program, where I met Brian, um, I realized that the power of networking, and that's when the phrase um, that uh, your network is your network became very important to me, or became very apparent to me that um, this is actually factual, right? So, you know, start surrounding myself with more people that look like me, Brian, and a couple of others who are aspiring to create a better um, financial situation for their family. And also, you know, figuring out how to, how to do what Jim Rome says, which is, you know, you work full time on your, on your income, you know, while you're working part time on creating wealth until your wealth, the creation of wealth surpasses your, your regular W-2 job, you know. So, you know, putting little things like those into perspective and creating a bigger network, I believe was value, valuable for me um, in the education platform and also networking. Excellent. 
and I'm assuming Brian, as you know, you potentially went into a educational field. So I, I would assume mm-hmm. that you are a proponent of uh, of, of education in, in uh, multifamily. Absolutely, you know, and um, having I, I've always had desires to teach. You know, that's part of the reason I wanted to to be a professor. You know, up front, but. Uh, um, you know, in, in just about every role I've been in, in, in the Marine Corps and, and outside, you know, I've always been in a teaching role because it's what I enjoy, you know. And um, so, you know, right right now, I think we've come full circle to where, you know, we had to have somebody hold our hands to get into the business um, to where now, you know, Tribe of Titans is, you know, our way of, of helping other people do what we've done, you know. So, um, you know, we're, we're working with, uh, you know, two women came to us there, the members of the tribe of Titans, they came to us with a deal under contract and said, we need help, you know, and, um, you know, we're, we're in a position right now where we can help. And of course, you know, when, when, when I started talking with them and figuring out what they needed, you know, I realized I'm like, okay, we need to bring some other people in, into the team. And so pulled out my phone, you know, texted Hutch, you know, and, um, didn't know he was in the middle of the desert in 29 Palms. So, you know, four days later when he didn't talk to me, I'm like, what's going on? But uh, so, I mean, end, end of the day, you know, it was, it was such a vital part of um, the, the, the education, the mentorship, you know, and, and the networking that I got from other programs, you know, it was so important to me that, uh, um, you know, I, I kind of melded that with my strengths in, in, in teaching and helping other people to do the same thing. And, and now that's, that's the focus of what I'm doing. You know, we're, we're, we're still, still doing deals, but at the same time, we're, you know, trying to help other people do the same thing. Good. And so I guess, you know, the next thing is kind of like segueing the multifamily and military, putting it together. Um, I guess, you know, talk about like your role in your multifamily, you, you're part of a firm, you have the Four Oaks or, and, and, you know, what exactly you're doing there and then how you leverage off of your military experience to make it work. Yeah. So um, my, my role with, with Four Oaks has, has morphed over time. You know, when I, when I first started, I think I was the driving force in a lot of things. Um, you know, I, I was the one that found the first property. I did, you know, most of the due diligence. I mean, the partners came together and we all, you know, walk the property together and whatnot. But, uh, um, you know, I, I was dealing with the brokers. I was dealing with the lenders. I, I essentially put the first deal across the finish line. And, and from there, I moved into an asset management role. But uh, um, and at the time, my, my job at the Pentagon, there, there's two types of jobs at the Pentagon. There, there, there's the ones where you, you never have enough hours in the day. And there's the other ones where you have, you know, just the opposite effect. But um, I, I, I had a lot of, I had enough flexibility that I was able to, you know, um, get on call, you know, weekly calls with the property manager or, or sometimes, you know, two or three times a week with the property manager during, during the regular business hours. Um, but COVID changed things, you know, when, when, you know, the president started shutting things down for, because of COVID, you know, DOD followed suit immediately. Um, and, you know, essentially, my job changed. I got put on the COVID task force, which was, you know, now a, a crew position. And, and um, you know, I was, I was literally in the Pentagon, you know, 14, 15 hours a day, um, you know, well, I guess, including transit time, you know, up to 15 hours a day away from home, um, you know, that, that changed things on a dime. We had to shift responsibilities. So one of my, and being able to leverage partners was, was absolutely crucial at this point because, you know, I was able to tell, like, talk to my partners and say, hey, look, my, my hours just changed and my job changed and I'm not going to be able to you know, be on the call with the, the property managers. So um, essentially, that's, that's when we, we rethought things a little bit. You know, a couple of my partners stepped up and did more of the asset management. Um, you know, my, my partner, Eric, was already, you know, taking a lead role on acquisitions um, and you know, I, I started doing a lot of our, our social media stuff, you know, things that I could do, you know, in the middle of the night, if I had to, um, is, is basically what I ended up doing. So, you know, got the podcast up and off the ground, which is, you know, brought a lot of investors in and brought, brought a lot of people into our, our, our circles. Um, and then, you know, started creating the, the Tribe of Titans, you know, and, and most of that was done, um, you know, late at night, early in the morning, you know, before and after these, these, uh, 
you know, long shifts at the Pentagon. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, in, end of the day, you know, just the, the flexibility of, of having partners um, really got me through a lot of that. Um, and, you know, as far as, you know, leveraging, you know, the, the military aspect um, up, up front, you know, I was, I was definitely le- leveraging the leadership aspect. I, w- I was taking, you know, taking on these big deals and putting together teams and, you know, accomplishing missions. Um, and now I'm still doing the same thing, just in a, a slightly different role in the company um, and helping other people accomplish their missions and, um, you know, partnering with other people on deals and, and helping them get to the, to their own finish lines. Excellent. So move on I get to Hutch and, and, and your story also, I know you have a partner um, who's also military as well. So I'd like to hear that story of how you break your role and how also you were able to leverage your experience in the military into multifamily. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, to Brian's point, the, the power of a team, man, is it makes you unstoppable. Right. So we, we all have a vision of what we want our life to be. Right. And at some time we are the one that's going to once it's going to make it happen. But sometimes we need help. And when you have a team that 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 works with that has great synergy, like Brian seems team does, man, it's amazing to watch the, the things that they can do. You know, so I feel fortunate to have something comparable with um, with Dr. Jones, Heath Jones. Him and I started out as as accountability partner. Right. Um, the, 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 the author of the book. Hal Elrod was the guest, uh, the, the keynote speaker for the first um, conference that we went to. You know, one of the things that he advocate for is for everyone who is striving to achieve big, big things in their life is to, to have an accountability partner, right? It could be a family member, it could be a friend, just somebody who can be, can tell you like, look, okay, here's what we're doing, you know, and checks and balances uh, as he's trying to accomplish the goal, you know? So Heath and I, we joined partnership in 20... 2019, 2019. Um, but we did not formalize our company until the beginning of 2020. You know, since then, um, we partnered with um, the Four Oaks guys in 167 units in Augusta, Georgia. And, uh, you know, I, I could have done that myself, but it would not have, not, would not have been as effective and as efficient without Dr. Jones because we raised all the capital that, the capital that we, we needed to raise in a, in a very short time. Right. So say, for example, a week and a half, we will raise all the capital that we, that, that we need. But what happened is that before that, that week came, came about, right, we were networking. We started a podcast. We did a meetup, um, went to different um, um, events. We also was able to put a capital together so we can have money for risk capital, um, be able to have money to pay for travels to do due diligence on the properties, um, so on and so forth. You know, so it's amazing having that partnership to actually, you know, to, to um, take on these uh, multifamily um, properties with, you know, so um, Dr. Jones has been an amazing part of, part of the H Square Capital team. Excellent. So, Excellent. so you, you also work together, together both of you. Um, and, I, and I didn't even know that previous to this call, but uh, can you give a little break to how you, Brian, and, and Hutch connected and uh, what projects you've worked together so far? Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, we first connected, you know, through a, a networking group, you know, affiliated with Michael Blanc. Um, we, we came together, um, we met in person, as, as Hutch said, at a Michael Blanc conference. Um, and, you know, a couple of, so, so the first deal that we, we partnered on was a 55 unit. And um, we, we got into a little crunch with, with the lender, you know, and it was, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the lender's fault. It wasn't our fault. We were just kind of a victim of circumstance. Uh, um, if, you, if you guys, you know, were paying attention to headlines, you know, in, in like September, 2019, you know, that's when we were trying to close on our first deal. Um, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, you know, big lending giants, the multifamily community, um, were running close to their lending caps for the year. And, you know, Congress was working on, you know, figuring out how, you know, what to do with that. But essentially what happened is, you know, we, we had this $4 million property under contract. We, we were looking at everything. We had to raise $1.4 million to close. And, when Fannie and Freddie got near their caps, what they ended up doing was um, 
changing the terms on a lot of the loans, you know, not, not the loans that they had already closed on, but the loans that were like in processing, you know? And so we're, we're like two weeks away from closing and, you know, Fanny, Fanny may come back to us and says, Hey, I know we, we told you we were going to give you, you know, three, three and a quarter million proceeds for this $4 million property. You know, we're going to give you 2.7, you know? And so all of a sudden we went from, you know, having plenty of money in the bank ready to close to, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? You know, and um, we ended up, you know, massaging things and, and changing the structure of the deal so we could still give our investors what we had, had projected for them. But we had this problem where we needed, you know, in very short order to bring another, um, you know, several hundred thousand dollars back to the table. And so um, essentially I called Hutch, you know, I'm like, hey, Hutch, you know, uh, we're in a pinch right here. Um, can you help? He's like, sure. You know, he made a couple of phone calls. I'm sure it was like, you know, two or three phone calls and he comes back with, it was probably more than that, but uh, um, you know, and you know, Hutch was, was clutch in that situation, you know, helped close on that deal, you know, and we would have, we probably would have closed without him, but it would have been, you know, extremely difficult, but he, he definitely gave us a lot of breathing room and, and we were able to close um, because of that. And so, you know, fast forward a year later, you know, um, when we had another deal under contract, you know, this one, we brought him in, you know, from the beginning, it was a um, $8 million purchase price, you know, and we we're going to have to raise almost $4 million in, in capital because of the dynamics of the deal. Um, you know, we, we were comfortable, you know, hitting two to $3 million on a capital raise. And so, you know, we brought in Hutch from the beginning and said, Hey, you were clutch on this last deal. Do you want to work with us again? And, you know, same thing, you know, he, he brought in some capital, you know, partnered with us. He helped with the due diligence, um, you know, did, did a lot of different things, you know, helping us get to the closing table. Um, and then, you know, like, like I said, with this, uh, um, this other deal that we're working on right now, when I, when I talked to the, the people who had the deal under contract, you know, we, we liked the deal, we liked them. And when, when I realized they needed some help in, in certain areas, I'm like, you know what, Heath and Hutch would be you know, the, the perfect people to turn to again. So, you know, re really it was, you know, if, if you look at it, it was, you know, building a relationship over some time, um, you know, and, and we, we were, we were probably in contact, you know, every, every couple of weeks, you know, we would get on a call together and just check in. And, you know, when, when, when we needed the help, you know, Hutch was, Hutch was there and he came, you know, he, he came in and delivered. Excellent. Excellent. Interesting. Interesting. I, 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 I listened, listened to a little bit of an echo. Hopefully that's better. Um, um, you have, you Brian, have Brian, the, the apartment, apartment uh, you're, uh, you're, what do you call there? The podcast. Yeah. Uh, and I love the format where you can, mm -hmm. you have two, an experience and an experience and you ask a question. Uh, what was interesting the other day, I heard a one, and the question was, someone was talking about the why, why are people, why are you doing this? Why are you doing multifamily? Uh, and I'll throw this question to uh, Hutch, because I know I've heard you talk about also getting others into multifamily and particularly other military career, uh, having an opportunity to invest in multifamily career wealth. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, ab absolutely. So there is so much wealth to be created in this country, right? Um, and a lot of times we're not exposed to it, right? Um, we feel comfortable living in an apartment complex, right? But I would almost... I would, I would say that a lot of a lot of folks who lives in these apartments never really think about I could actually own this entire complex right so I'm all about we, we are all about um, spreading that word like you know so we have to be we have to be thinking bigger and if we are thinking bigger we can definitely re, um, create a lot more happy people look two-thirds of Americans a survey done a few years ago two-thirds of Americans are un, uh, unhappy with their life. And, you know, one of, a lot of the things is that they're not financially where they, where they need to be, 
right? They have not created the relationships that, that, that they need to create, and they don't have a long-term financial future, you know, for themselves and for generations to come, right? So when you can create a investment vehicle that um, is a little bit more predictable, and um, a lot, a lot less risk associated by buying a tang tangible asset, which is a, which is income producing, right? Um, it gives you more flexibility to where you can really spend more time with the people that you care for or the people that you care about. You know, um, it's not going to happen overnight, but you have to start someplace, right? You know, so uh, we just want to educate a lot of folks about the possibility, whether you're a passive investor, you know, making your money work while you do the things that you love, because look. A lot of people who work in corporate America actually love their jobs, right? But at some point, they want to be able to step away and, you know, be able to, like, Brian, I believe Brian wants to fund a mission, right, for one of his church, right? That, that's, that's a huge goal, right? Some people want to hand world hunger. I don't think that's a desire of mine, right? But if I can, if I can go to bed knowing that I, I, I have... Um, assisted others in achieving their dreams and being able to contribute to the cause that they want to contribute to, I think that, that is something that is humbling for me, right? And at the same time, putting put in the Hutchinson bloodline on a better trajectory um, towards financial future or, you know, creating generational wealth. I, I think that's, that, that for me, that, that's, very, that's very humbling. You know, so it's, it's for my family, right? That's my big why. Everything we do, everything I do is for my family. They're, they're my biggest why. But at the same time, the multifamily space provides us with the opportunity to help others um, um, support their why as well. Yeah, and I, I'm going to assume that you're going to ask me the same question, Jerry, and just just yeah. uh, just go with it. But uh, <laughs> you know, my my first why, you know, it's, it's really about time freedom, you know. But uh, um, you know, I, I remember back to it, you know a day, you know, four or five years ago when I was sitting on a ship, you know, in, in, in the middle of a big body of water somewhere, um, just, just realizing that, uh, you know, I had missed, you know, countless birthdays. You know, I'm sure I could count them, but I, I've missed, you know, dozens of birthdays from, from my kids. I have five kids. And so between my five kids, I've definitely had dozens of birthdays to miss, but I've missed dozens of birthdays and Christmases and holidays and everything else. And, you know, originally the, the multifamily was, um, for me to, you know, be able to, you know, not have to deploy, not have to, you know, go away for six or eight months, you know, when, when the Marine Corps tells me to, and it was my exit plan from, from the military, you know, and, um, I knew myself well enough that if I didn't have an alternative, if I didn't have something, you know, that I could immediately fall back on, I, I, I wouldn't get out. And so, that was it. But, uh, you know, really end of the day, it ends up being a time freedom thing. You know, um, you know, I'm not tied to an employer or a clock like, like a lot of people are. And I mean, like, like I said, a lot of people enjoy their jobs. You know, I, I enjoyed the first, you know, probably 18 years of my Marine Corps career, you know, last two at the Pentagon debatable, you know, is, is what I'll say, but, uh, um, you know, anyway, it was, it, it's really about time freedom. It's, it's really about having, um, the time and the money to be able to make an impact on people's lives. And, and that's, um, that's really what it comes down to. And in, incidentally, I've already funded one mission, you know, for, for somebody else and, you know, it's time to, you know, start uh, increasing what we're able to do. Excellent. So we're almost at the, the hour mark. So I want to thank you guys both. Um, Anybody want any questions, you could drop in the chat and I'll try to sneak it in. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll give you both, an, you know, an opportunity to, to kind of give a final uh, closing mark. And I appreciate you guys coming in. Uh, Hutch will go with you. Um, and, and, and guess also, you know, as this is a Carolina uh, centric, you know, meetup, um, you know, Def, to talk, you know, to, uh, about some of your, you know, maybe just mention. Uh, your thoughts on the Carolina market and the properties you have here uh, before you drop and I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So I just PCS, I'm permanent change the station I'm from Florida out to California, right? So um, I'm not actively looking in the Carolinas right now, but I do have boots on the ground. Um, a part of the four host guys, you know, uh, over there, um, constantly looking for deals, right? So we're always looking for opportunity to work with the four host guys. They're great people. Let me tell you, on the first deal we worked together on, here, here's, here's what really drew me in, right? We, they could have went back to the investors and said, look, 
um, we're going to reduce, we need to raise more money, we're going to reduce your return on investment. But instead of doing that, what the Forex guy did, guys did, they actually reduce their income, right? So they went from a 80-20 split to a 90-10 split. Not a lot of other um, um, operators would have done that, right? On all, all lesson, they, they're working for less and they were doing most of the work, you know? So with that, that tells me that they had a true value um, for the people, for the investors, for the passive investors, you know? So it's, it's, it's not always, it's not all so, so much about them, but it's about how can, can we make this deal successful and how can any, or can everyone who's a part of this deal benefit? And that was a big, that was a big um, green flag for me um, with the Four Oaks guys. So we always looking for a reason to work with them. Um, Heath and I, that is. So and I, you know, Gabe, I know you have a hard stop at the hour. So again, I just want to thank you. I thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Uh, thank you for your service. And um, you know, reach out uh, if, if uh, I'll actually see if I can drop your information in the chat, or if anybody needs uh, to reach you, uh, I will get you. Uh, I'll get them your information. And thanks again for coming on. Absolutely, appreciate you. Appreciate all y'all for listening to me. <laughs> Brian, we'll chat to you in a little bit. Yep. Yep. We're, we're on a call talking about our Augusta deal. It's uh top of the hour, right? Top of the hour. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll basically wrap it up with the same, same types of uh, you know, Carolinas, you know, it's Carolina multifamily group. I think there's a lot of solid dynamics happening in the Carolinas. You know, there's, that there's a lot of people, a lot of places in the U S that are gaining population. A lot of places in the U S that are losing population you know, and, and the Carolinas are one of the places that are gaining population. And, um, you know, there, there's a lot of business friendly practices there, but, you know, another big part of the reason is, you know, real estate there is still cheap, you know, and you're, you're getting a lot of people who want to get more bang for their bucks or they're moving from the high cost areas to the low cost areas. And I, I think COVID accelerated, you know, a lot of the work from home trend, you know, people who are teleworking, you know, there, there's, you know, so many more people that are able, that are disconnected from a work site right now because of, you know, um, because of the, the COVID closures and, and whatnot. But uh, what that does is it allows people to live where they want and still work for, for a job. You know, you can, you can work for Wall Street right now. And I know people who are working, you know, Wall Street jobs, you know, from Charlotte, you know, they're, they're just teleworking in every day and doing what they need to do, um, you know, from a home office or whatnot. But what that allows people to do is, is to live in low cost of living areas like, you know, uh, Greenville, South Carolina, um, and get to have, have the high paying jobs in New York city. But, uh, um, anyway, a lot of, a lot of goodness happening there. I think the, um, the corridor between Charlotte and Atlanta, uh, I-85 is, is where a lot of growth and a lot of good things have happened and are, are still yet to happen. Um, and another fun fact is, is you can still buy, um, you can buy existing real estate in, in a lot of South Carolina for cheaper than it costs to build, you know, an equivalent property. So, you know, um, there, there's a lot of good things that are happening there and eventually those, those numbers are going to equal out. But, uh, um, you know, real estate in general, you know, I, I listen to the Fed talk, you know, I listen to the government officials talk about, you know, this inflation thing being transitory. I, I don't buy it. Um, I also think real estate's a, a great hedge to inflation. And I think we're going to be seeing, you know, higher than normal inflation for the next several years. But, uh, um, you know, real estate's always been, you know, the best hedge against inflation. So, um, you know, that, that said, you know, I, I think, I think Carolinas are a solid play for, for a lot of different real estate investment opportunities. Um, I think multifamily is the one that uh, performs the best long-term and weathers storms, you know, better than anything else. Um, at the end of the day, I think it's just a, a good business to be in. Excellent. Well, thank you again uh, for coming on. I learned a lot. This was, this was an awesome chat. Um, it was great. And, uh, you know, and again, uh, you just dropped your information. So that's awesome. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, you, anyone that wants to ask them, you know, look you up, uh, you have the tribe of Titans going, uh, the podcast. So, uh, a lot of ways to follow you and learn more about you. Yep. I'll drop a little, just drop the little blurb about the tribe and I'll, I'll drop the, uh, um, the link to the podcast in there as well. So 
give me 30 seconds and that'll be in, well, less than that. That'll be in there. So awesome. there's the resources we have, you know, Tribe of Titans, you know, it's, it's a community of investors. Um, Dire of Apartment Investor Podcast is, it's a pretty good show, I think. Awesome. 